Okay, so uh, this config XML file, once we set some of these basic features of our app, we don't have to do very much. Here, however, is one of the important places where we will deal with plugins. We're not going to use all of the plugins. Just like I said, you shouldn't use all of the plugins. For example, you know, Bluetooth. If your app is not going to interface with Bluetooth, don't install it because it's going to take up space in your device. And when someone wants to download your app from the App Store, it'll say, this app would like to use X, Y, and Z. For example, Bluetooth. Why does this calculator app need to access Bluetooth? Is it going to spy on me? So for the moment, the one I do want to activate, if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, we have one of Splash Screen. So scroll down, you will see it's the common name is Splash Screen. The plugin ID is Cordova-Plugin-Splash Screen. This one, Push Plugin, that's one of these plugins that will allow you to push data to your user, you know, notifications and cool stuff like that. Um, that one is, its ID is PhoneGap-Plugin-Push. So it's just something to note, which I did mention in the handout number four. There's these core ones that you can get right out of this screen. You just activate them. Any third-party ones or custom code, custom plugins that someone else has invented, you have to get whatever their ID is, and then you can add it. For example, later on, barcode scanner. Later on, we will go over to the custom screen and activate the barcode plugin, and then what we'll be able to do is scan barcodes but it's not part of the core features. The one I want to work on with at the moment is Splash Screen. Click on it and click Add. That will connect. That also says this will work on Android, Windows devices, iOS, Blackberry, Tizen, even Ubuntu, which is Linux. So that does have to connect to the internet and uh, download the files and then it'll install it. The splash screen plugin, the point of it is to show a splash screen that loads up before your um, your main app. Let me do one quick test and then we will write a little code to see this in action. In the meantime, uh, click on click on the icon there, detailed information. Not the icon, but click on the link, detailed info. We'll look at the documentation to see how this works. So my handout number four reminds you that you need uh, you have the plugin, but then you need to know how it works. Then you need to write the code to make it do what you want. So while mine is prepping, I'm going to open that. And notice uh, in Visual Studio, we have an in-app browser. It opens up a tab in Visual Studio to open a website. So um, I don't know how I feel about that, but it opens it up right there in the app. And if you'd like to, you can open it up in a separate browser uh, if you want. But anyway, uh, what this plugin is, then if you kind of browse a little bit. Mine is just a little mine is just a little bit slow as it does this. But what I want to do with this plugin is display a splash screen. <coughs> really slow on mine, most likely because I've got my recorder recording. And the problem could be that it doesn't have to be necessarily in this room. It could be anyone on campus. Okay, here it is. So if I scroll down a little bit, the quarter of a splash screen, We've already installed it. Check. It works on all the devices, basically. Keep scrolling. There's a whole big section on iOS-specific information. For the moment, I'm going to skip that because 
or not running iOS, but I would want to read that if I eventually want to set up my app so that it looks good, the splash screen looks good on iOS. There's a bunch to skip, and maybe it's easier on the left side to jump over here to example configuration. Under example configuration, it tells you that it tells you that the um, the way this structure works is you've got a res folder, a screenshot folder, subfolders for each platform. We already know this, we saw this ourselves. Inside your config XML file, there's a bunch of code that specifies what the splash screens are, where they are, and their file names and all of that. We saw that before too. But one thing that is here that it that it explains somewhere is in the example there is an item that says preference name splash screen delay value 10,000. This is in milliseconds. This is how long should the splash screen be visible before it disappears? This is what we're going to do in a moment. I'm going to say 10 seconds. I want my splash screen to display 10 seconds. And then uh, via how via the rest of this hand uh, this uh, doc this documentation we'll see how how it works. So uh, this is the example where there is no pretty button to click on to set the splash screen delay. This is an example where I do have to edit the actual XML code. The way we would do that is. If you haven't done so yet, save this XML file. We made a bunch of changes inside of it. Go ahead and save it. What we need to do then is I want to I want to look at the raw code of this file. So you want to right-click config XML and select view code. It will then tell you you've got you've got the the designer version of it open. Would you like to close it to open the, the code? Yes. <coughs> So go ahead and right-click Config XML, View Code. Say yes, I want to switch view. And now we get here 114 lines of XML code that was basically you know, shown to us in a friendly way by the design view. There are several lines. Uh, here's a line number four, Description. We wrote it in a little box, and then here it is in the raw code, line 4. Uh, one item that I notice here that is not in the, in the design view, notice on line uh, 5, author, um, Smith app, whatever you wrote. But there are these attributes, href and email. Usually I do the edits in the config file, so I just noticed it, but in the design view, it doesn't have these little boxes for you to change. That's odd. So here you would want to change href to be your website and email to be your email. Go ahead and do that. Again, if you don't have a real website, that's fine, but I'm going to make it up like this, because that's the same as what I'm doing If you look, if you look at line two, it's a really long line, and line two has got a spot that says ID. <coughs> so that package ID that we wrote, that project ID, there it is. And then version, there it is there. So different things that we see in the design view show up here in the raw code. And here, go ahead and change line five for your website, and then email, change it to your email. So in this file, according to the documentation, I want to write the code to show the splash screen for 10 seconds. This XML file is different than HTML. 
you should not write any comments here. Um, only a certain set of allowed code can go here. So unless it is an allowed tag, you shouldn't write it. The allowed tags are mentioned in the documentation here, on the splash screen or Cordova. And in this case, I want to add, you see how the way that it's written, preference with an attribute of name, an attribute of value, and a closing of semi of slash. So we can write this anywhere in the code. We'll just write it at the end so we can find it quickly, or easily, I guess, before the end of widget. Open curly brace or open angle bracket preference. Name equals something. Value equals something. Close the tag. We have to close it this way. Space, angle bracket. Everything else has it like that. We have to do it this way. When we were writing HTML, I usually skipped that. This is XML. It's technically different. So we should write it like that. Then we've got, uh, the name is Splash Screen Delay, and notice the specific way this is written. It's got to have these upper cases, capital S, capital S, capital D, Splash Screen Delay. How long will our splash screen be visible before the app loads up? Question. Well, this is this is a little bit separate regarding the plugin. This is to add the feature of how long to display the splash screen. Adding the plugin of splash screen activates the ability to use splash screens. But this now specifies how long to display the splash screen before the app starts. So this is our value. In milliseconds, so 1,000 milliseconds is one second. I want this to be displayed for 10,000 milliseconds. I want the splash screen visible for 10 seconds. That is too long. But with another bit of code we'll write in a moment, we will actually, the app itself, we will program it to be smart enough to display the splash screen as long as it needs. I'm first setting it up because depending on how complex your app is, it may need two seconds for it to prepare itself, then it's ready. Depending on your plugins and all this complexity, it may need seven seconds to display uh, to prepare itself before it's ready. So if we hedge our bets by putting something like 10 seconds, we should have enough time for the app to load into the memory to prepare itself, and then as long as it needs, you know, 3.7 seconds, then the app will detect and hide the splash screen. It doesn't mean it will always be 10 seconds. It's going to depend on a little code we'll write in a moment. But this is to show a splash screen for 10 seconds unless we write other code to remove it when necessary. I'm going to save it, and then I want to deploy this or run it on a device. I don't believe it looks that interesting on a, splat, on a, on a, on a simulator. Run it on a real device. Check the spelling, preference, attribute name, attribute value, splash screen delay, capital letters there when necessary, and then a time. No comma. It's 10,000, no, no comma. I don't have backup web storage. Backup web storage. If you don't have it, that's OK. Uh, the way we said it was, remember when we were in the regular config file, what I did was uh, I went into the iOS 
screen. I'll show it in a moment. But we were in the iOS screen, and there was an option there to select um, cloud storage, yes or no. I just had left it at yes. So if you don't have cloud storage, it's okay for the moment. Okay, that's okay for the moment. So um, I it loaded up, and for a moment there was a splash screen in my device for 10 seconds. It looked different. It was just the Cordova logo, and there was a spinning happening. That was the splash screen. <coughs> 10 seconds passed, and then I went into my real screen where it said, device ready. One way to test this again, I'm going to press stop. I'm going to go back to my device, and then I'm going to quit the app and run the app again. CBDB, I'm going to launch it again. So there's the splash screen, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, eventually. See, it's still going on, eventually, 1, 2, 3, 10, and then it's going to go to the regular home screen. So that's what this is doing. It's taking the splash screen from the screens folder, from the Android folder, one of the ones of, one of the ones of the appropriate orientation and quality, either high DPI, low DPI, medium, or extra high, one of those. It's taking the appropriate one, displaying it for 10 seconds, and then the app starts. So did everyone see a little splash screen for a moment? I cannot quite tell which of the four possibilities it is right now. It's going to depend on your device. Probably for this device, it's kind of an old one, probably it's loading the LDPI portrait. It's a low-end device. If you've got a newer device, one of these Nexus tablets, probably it's loading up the extra high DPI portrait, or maybe the high DPI portrait. So the documentation here in this screen talks about uh, loading the splash screen for X amount of time. Question? Excuse me, the value always shows us the time? No. In this case, because we're talking about a splash screen delay, it is a time. Other times, the value is a word or something else, depending on what the name of the preference is. Because you have cloud and you have... No, cloud is something else also. I wouldn't uh, assume that simply because oh, this is... Yeah, you have value, cloud, universal, and then some... So depending what, depending what the preference is, yeah. So here you have backup cloud. And over here, target device universal. So that's not always a, a number. It can be different things, depending so on what the preference is. There is, there is no in these times, or no? No, because look at deployment target here. This is saying, um, or right here, Android minimum version 14. That is not time. That is just version 14 of Android. Mm -hmm. So this is, this is not always time. It depends on what name is first. Yes? That little animation, um, I think somewhere else in the documentation it tells you how to change it. I think the default is fine, but that is some sort of built-in animation that spins. But the graphic that displays is going to be based on one of these splash screens that is in here. So a little later, we will fire up Photoshop and we will make changes to these. 
we will have our custom graphic loading, and then the animation is going to play on top of it. So the um, the first part of this is to have it display for a long time, but I don't want it to always be 10 seconds. It's way too long. You, you never see a splash screen lasting that long, really. A splash screen should last as long as necessary for the app to get ready. So if you go further on this documentation, there is a spot that talks about methods. There's a long part of the documentation where it tells you about the details about the dimensions and orientation and what to do on iPhone and what to do on Android and examples and all of that. Then pretty far down in the documentation there are two methods to commands to write in JavaScript. Dot show, dot hide. And they do simply that. Show a splash screen at a certain time, hide a splash screen at a certain time. So simply navigator, dot splash screen, dot hide. If there's a splash screen currently visible, we can hide it. The opposite of it, show. So if we need to show a splash screen for some reason, navigator.splashscreen.show method in JavaScript, and it shows a splash screen. In our case, after X amount of time, when the device is ready, I want to hide the splash screen. Do we have some sort of way that it detects when the device is ready? Wait, last time we wrote the code. Hmm. Where? In JavaScript. In the JavaScript. So in the console log, we, we were doing something like that. So along those lines, we're going to write some code now, JavaScript code. So part one of the splash screen is we say, let's show the splash screen X amount of times. Part two is stop showing the splash screen when necessary, when the device is ready. That is inside of our WW folder, scripts folder, index.js. Go ahead and open up index.js in the scripts folder, in the WW folder. <coughs> Line 8. <laughs> now uh, we'll make the change in a moment, but my handout, number 3, again uh, goes into detail about what's in each of these template files. And if you look at the handout 3, scripts, it goes on to explain what those various lines mean and what they do, what is use script, etc. Line 8, very important. In order for Cordova to work, we need to detect <coughs> that the device it's running on is ready. If the device ready event occurs, we then run the on device ready function. Without this line, we cannot use any Cordova JavaScript code. So this is one of the lines you should not erase when we eventually integrate last month's project into this month, we do not want to erase line 8. This is what detects that the device is ready. When the device is ready, then it runs the onDevice function, line 10, and then all of our code, custom code, goes in there. This is where we had the console log output last time. My handout then uh, jumps to 23, 27, then comes back, line 10. Another very important line. After the device ready event occurs, all the code in this function can run. We will write 99% of the code of JavaScript or jQuery in, uh, in this function. Any code from a non of a project should be copied and pasted here. So eventually, when we take the code from part one, we're going to, from our JavaScript file from part one, we're going to copy it and paste it basically into this function because we want that code to be ready when the device is ready, when, when Cordova has detected the device is ready. 
if the on device ready has fired, that means that Cordova has detected that the device is ready. If, the, if it's detected it's ready, we don't need the splash screen anymore. The splash screen is there temporarily while the app prepares itself. The app is finished preparing itself when on device ready runs, when it detects device ready. So anywhere inside of on device ready, but probably right after the first line, this is where we will need navigator.splashscreen.hide. Don't show that splash screen anymore. We're ready. The device is loaded what it needs to. And as we add more plugins and more code, that time is going to take a little bit longer, but this will be smart enough every time to remove the splash screen when necessary. Line 11, let's add a comment. Hide the splash screen after enough time has passed based on device ready event. enough time. Yes, enough time has passed. The actual code is navigator. I'm sorry to type navigator. It might suggest navigator. You can press tab dot hide uh, sorry, uh, navigator dot splash screen So if I've got a pretty empty project like right now, this should hide it pretty quick because there's not much to process and prepare. But as we add more plugins, as we add more JavaScript, as we add more HTML images and all of that, the app has more stuff to load into memory. But nonetheless, it will figure out the right time once the device is ready, hide the splash screen. I'm going to click Save All. If you didn't save your config XML file, this won't work. Gonna, I've edited index.js, so you should save all, just to be safe. And again, I'll deploy it to a device. You saw a moment ago, when I was holding it up, it was 10 seconds that it was waiting for it to load up. The second time around, it should happen a lot faster. We'll see. Remember, I like to uh, click home on the device to get me back to the home screen, just so that I know I'm loading the latest version. So build successful, it's going to load up. I'm going to count it down as soon as it loads up. Oh, here it goes, it's coming up. Okay, one, two, oh, that's it. It loaded up, it took one and a half seconds. And my app loaded up. A moment ago you saw it, 10 seconds. I forced it to 10 seconds, and then now it only needed one and a half seconds for the project to load. Ready to load. Device is ready. Um, I'm going to stop debugging and we'll pause there. Is that working? Is Are you getting some splash screen? Is it hiding it after a short amount of time? Anyone need a bit of help? Let's take a look. RAM and stuff we have on these computers, but we should be. No, well, even if you don't have my children, even if you don't have my children, you know, this, this mm -hmm. takes a lot of resources to process and compile. So it's not going to be common, unfortunately, perhaps. Is it just the circle? I have to double check how it's controlled, but most likely, yes, or it's some sort of graphic, so we have an ability to change that. The actual images. Okay, right, we can go to iOS. Um, it's set to cloud default. Click on the block. 
Almost like because that one line now affects everything. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
All right, so this um, this code here, navigator.splash.hide, that's the point of this, that it hides the, the splash screen as, uh, as necessary. What we will do is something super basic, and then uh, later we will uh, make this much better, much more impressive. We will have a, a lecture where we talk more in detail about using Photoshop and creating real graphics and all of that. For the moment, what I want to do is this. Uh, I want to edit the graphics that currently exist. Later we will make better graphics. So uh, I think the easiest way to do this is if you uh, if you go to your flash drive in the Windows Explorer, go to your flash drive, and let's go to the folder where the splash screens are stored. Um, open up CBDV folder on your flash drive. CBDV folder in there, perhaps res folder, right? That's where the resources of the app are, so you open the res folder. And then we will see screens folder. Since we're testing on Android devices for the moment, we'll just make some changes in the Android folder. Now don't double click these because these want to open apparently in Adobe uh, in Adobe Fireworks. I don't want to use Adobe Fireworks. It takes up too much resources. But we've got a possible um, eight splash screens. Do I need to edit all eight of them in this app? Yes or no? In our current app, do I need to edit all eight of these splash screens? Why? We've set it to portrait. We've set our app in config XML to be portrait, therefore we can either delete these landscapes, I'm going to leave them, but we don't need to edit the landscape files because we're never going to be in landscape orientation in this project. So we have four. High DPI, low DPI, medium DPI, extra high. Depending on your device, we're going to need to edit these. We're going to edit them all for fun and make them really ugly. It doesn't matter. We're going to make them great next time. Make our apps great again. So what we're going to do is I'm going to right-click the... Uh, I'm going to start with the first one, HDPI. I'm going to right-click, and we're going to use plain old edit, which should hopefully open in paint. I don't want to use anything special like Photoshop or fireworks. You can if you want to. But I just want to open plain old right-click edit. HDPI Portrait. It opens Microsoft Paint. I'm just going to have some super basic graphics drawing tools to make my app icon different. Just play with it. Write some text, make some graphics, whatever. Just mess with it. And then click Save. Just change those built-in portrait splash screens a little bit. Click your Save button at the top and then do that for the other three. LDPI Portrait, right-click Edit. This one I'm going to make it have evil eyes. Just save it. It has usurped its programming. MDPI, 
Notice all of these are some sort of dimensions. Oops. Do not right-click edit in Notepad++ this thing, like I did. <coughs> so used to right-click edit with Notepad++ that I did it to a graphic. Edit. What's that? Just the portrait ones, yeah. My, for mine, I probably only need to edit LDPI on my small device, but for your larger devices, it's probably either going to be HDPI or LDPI. So it's just safe to edit all four of them to see a result. We'll have a, a real... We'll have a real uh, day where we talk about Photoshop next time. I'll also show you, if you're not very artistic, I'll show you various like uh, online resources to make graphics quickly and some nice starting points. We'll get a little crash course in Photoshop next time. You want to save these, make some changes. You can add some text. Paint is a very, very basic um, editor, but there's the ability to change text and do basic stuff. No, you need it. You need at least Photoshop 4.0 and up for layers. In Photoshop, we will make some real splash screens with some nice design. Uh, this is my XHDPI, which probably won't even show up on this on this app, this device. That is, this device is probably LDPI, but that's what we have to do for all, de all devices, because some people have Android 4, some people have Android 7, so we have four copies of that icon to change. Then on the iPhone, that's also a lot of changes there. In that res folder for iOS, you're going to see sizes for iPhone, sizes for iPads. If you had chosen that our app is universal, our app could load up in an iPhone or an Android. So I've got to change all the portrait orientation splash screens for iPhones and Androids and Retina screens and all of that. Remember when we looked at this last time in the res folder of iOS, this one's 10 graphics I need to change. Portrait size this, portrait size that, portrait size Retina, landscape, etc. We set our app to be locked portrait so I don't have to edit them all, but if you're going to do portrait landscape, you've got to edit all of those. If you want to make those changes, save the file, you can then close Paint. If you go back to uh, Visual Studio, you can run it and see your latest splash screen. Yes, can I? Exactly. Um, I would recommend keep the name because Visual Studio is going to look for these file names. So keep those file names, keep them ping format, just change the graphics inside the file. Keep the file name, keep the format, keep the location, but other than that, change it any way you want or any skills with Illustrator or Photoshop that, that you have. see, I believe I mentioned um, one of my handouts, I think handout 2. Yeah, res folder. My handout 2. So uh, in the res folder, you've got various items here. Uh, screens, flash screens for each platform, designed ping images with no transparency, 
to be displayed as your app starts. And we were looking at that. While we're here, let's go look at the icons uh, folder. For each platform, you'll find an icon for your app. This icon will show up on the user's device when they install your app. Keep the file name the same, same dimensions when you add your own icon. Simply replace that placeholder with your own ping. Use transparency in your ping for best results. I don't think uh, paint can create a transparent graphic, so that's okay. But if you haven't done so yet, on using a real device before you do this, on a real device, have you gone out of the app and have you gone into the app folder screen? Have you gone to see all the apps installed? Because you should now see a CBDB app installed on the device. It is a real app that is installed in the real app screen, and I see it right there. CBDB, it's still got the Cordova icon. I'm about to change that so that that icon is whatever I make. So that's inside of the icons folder. We were inside of the screens folder, and here's the screen splash screens. If you back up to res, you have icons. For the moment, I'll just change the Android ones. There's only four of them to work with. Low DPI, medium DPI, high DPI, extra high. Same thing. Right click, edit in paint, just change them however you want and save. Then we'll compile in Visual Studio. And then to see that, you want to look inside of your app drawer, whatever this thing is, the app launcher. I think the old name was the app drawer, and now they call it the app launcher in Android. So really small. You can click the zoom button on the bottom right to zoom in. So last month we focused like 95% or like 90% on code. Last month we wrote a lot of HTML, CSS, JavaScript. We did a little bit of design. We talked about fonts, we talked about colors in the theme roller, graphics a little bit. One thing we need to cover this month also is this, which we will cover next time with more Photoshop effort. But as I said last month, if you're going to be an app developer, if you're the only person in your company as an app developer, no one needs to know that you're the only person in you know, victorapps.com. Um, if you're the only person, you're going to be in charge of writing the code, debugging the code, testing the code, and non-code stuff. You're going to be in charge of graphics and colors and, and design of your app. And you may be very comfortable writing the code and being on the technical mindset. You should have also some exposure at least. You don't have to be a pro. But you should have some exposure at least to the graphics part of it. And when we uh, do this a little bit more for real next time, I'll show you online resources for you to quickly create graphics, nice looking elements for icons and splash screens. But you should be able to do both. You should have both under your belt.
So this is the Cordova mascot. It's some sort of like little cube robot thing. You see this throughout the documentation at the Cordova website. It probably has an official name. I haven't found it on the website, but that's the logo for Cordova. Once you make all of these changes, you can go back to Visual Studio. Deploy. You won't see this if you run it in the simulator. The simulator, again, has various limitations, but uh, running it on a real device is best. And also, I didn't haven't covered it yet here, but there's also an option there besides a simulator. There's something called an emulator. An emulator works like a real device even closer than the, than the simulator. That needs some setup, which I probably won't really go into. You should look at it on your own. Okay, here's my splash screen coming up. Oh, I see that funny face. I'm then going to exit the app and go into my folder icons, and I see it right there. It's got the yellow, the yellow smiley. So I changed the icon. It did remove the transparency, so it's got a, an ugly little white uh, border around it, because paint can't do, our version of paint, I guess, can't do transparency. So put a little simple white background, but it did change it where I put the, the yellow smiley eyes. And then when the app loaded up, it also had, when the app loaded up, I saw that it had When it loaded up, it had the splash screen of the angry face. Which one was my angry face? So it, it used, on my device, it used the HDPI graphic for the icon. And for the screenshot, uh, splash screen, You can also use the HDPI portrait, this uh, angry face one. Yes? Um, how did the, app, did the app decide to choose this image or this icon by, by itself, or is it proposed to? It's, uh, it's mostly by itself. Uh, the config XML file or some system inside of it checks what kind of device it is, what, what it's capable of, and it then loads the right one. So if a person has an older device, it will check and it will show the LDPI one. If a person has a newer or more powerful device, it will check and show the XHDPI one. So, so it just gives you options for the... Oh, okay. It gives it options for the right one to load up, and behind the scene somewhere, it chooses the right one. So we should have all four of those set up so that it knows to choose the right one when necessary. To understand the full details of what we've done here at the Cordova documentation website, we're going to have an item somewhere for icons. Let's see here somewhere. Customize icons. Oh, here it is. So uh, on the Cordova documentation, customize icons, there's a whole documentation there with all the gory details if you're interested. And then specifically for each of the platforms too, 
What do I need to know when I make my iOS icon or my uh, BlackBerry icon or my Android icon? So if you click on that, it'll show you there, and then you can read the details. Yes? Uh, can you, uh, from Visual Studio, can you connect to the Android device wirelessly? Yes. I don't believe so. I, 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 need, I think you need to have it on USB. I don't think you can do wireless deployment in this version. So the details, different sizes. Uh, there's also, which is not found in our default template, but there is also an extra, extra high DPI and an extra, 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 extra high DPI. At the, that doesn't mean a naughty one, it just means XXX. And uh, notice um, <laughs> if you want to do it yourself, you have to add this in the XML file manually via code. You have to set where is your extra, extra high DPI and extra, 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 and say that it is extra, extra, and extra for future devices. And then those are the, the, those are the dimensions. You can create these sizes in Photoshop or Illustrator or whatever drop them into that folder, set the names, and then your app would be capable to display really high quality images for really modern devices. This code here, yes, you would put it in the config XML file, and then the actual images in the res folder. This then goes on to tell you, go check out the official documentation, from the Google Developer site if you want, and also other info. So again, I'll have a handout where I kind of explain this again to keep it in one file. But this was adding the um, splash screen and, and icon. Let's do something else here. Um, we're setting ourselves up here, the CBDB project, right? So I want to set up another thing that will help us as we, as we go on. Um, I'm in the uh, code view of the XML file, but uh, let's switch over to the uh, design view. So right-click config XML and switch over to designer. This is the fastest way to do this. So make sure you save your config XML file and then yes. Let's go to the plugins screen. I want to activate the console plugin. This is a plugin that will give us more console output features. Um, this one's totally optional, but I like to use this one so that I can see more when I'm debugging. Go ahead and add that. So using console.log and such, uh, when we write JavaScript, this will now give us more, more output. Because we're dealing with a more complex project, we're dealing with a mobile project. It's based on top of a website, but now we have more to work with, such as these plugins for Bluetooth and all of that. So the more console output we get, I think the better to debug things. To use this, there's a link there for the full documentation, but it's pretty straightforward. <coughs> this plugin is meant to ensure that console.log is as useful as it can be. You 
just use it as before and get more console output. By the way, I want to use it in the index file. Line 13. Console.log. Whatever is ready. So when we run this on a, on a simulator or a real device, the console will now be visible in Visual Studio. We're not going to do F12 in the browser anymore. If you choose to run this on a simulator, on a simulator it's going to run in Chrome, but you don't want to press F12 in that simulator. It'll actually break the connection between Visual Studio and Chrome. Don't F12. You're going to see your console output directly in Visual Studio. So let's try this one first. Switch back to the simulator. Got some console output. Make sure you save all. Go ahead and run it. This is when it really uh, is helpful having a nice big screen or dual monitors. Does anyone work with dual monitors? Any high rollers like me? Yeah, cool. Dual monitors are definitely nice because on one screen you look at one thing, on another screen you look another. Oftentimes you can, on your, on your laptop, it has a little plug for an extra monitor. So you can be looking at one thing on your laptop's panel and then another thing on another, uh, on another monitor. Yeah. So don't press F12 in the browser. You're going to see here in the debug view of <coughs> Visual Studio this panel over here, which we hardly will use, and then a JavaScript console. So that one I'm usually going to stretch it out to view more. And so we've got output here. Cordova is ready. Now, don't worry about this fail to load. It says it can't load the fav icon. Well, the fav icon is for a website. We're not a website. If you really, if that really bothers you, just drop a fav icon file in your WW folder, and it'll find it and it'll ignore it. But here, um, it says Cordova is ready. Now, the way this shows it, it's kind of odd. I'm still not quite used to it. Cordova is ready in your index file, line 12, column 16. Whereas in the web browser, when you do F12, it would often tell you on the right edge over here where that JavaScript code exists. This is going to tell you right below it, which is so confusing because then you're going to see other code below it. And I often forget, is this telling me on the line above or below? It should be telling you on the line above. This is my last bit of code that has appeared, so that's how you can orient yourself. This is saying on your index, line 12, column 16, that's the code that appeared. You can see it in your index file, line 12, <coughs> column 16. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 16. Code is ready. Exactly. If you ch if you go in the browser, the splash screen will probably not work. These are, this is one of the many limitations of using in the simulator. Simulator is really nice to test some of the code quickly, but something like this, the browser doesn't have a splash screen. One thing that I just discovered earlier today, I was playing with the vibration plugin, and I hadn't really tested it on the browser recently. I tested it on the browser, and the words actually shook in the web browser. I was not expecting that. I activated vibration and then it shook in the web browser. Not the computer, but in the web browser. Can you give us the alt, alt tag, I guess? Hmm. We can kind of cover that later. If you can shake, it's pretty good too. Alternative. Alternative, not what it would be. Alternative yeah. feedback. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, also, what I don't, what I kind of don't like about the Visual Studio output panel here is that it uh, it doesn't clear itself. 
whenever we would run it in the in Chrome and we run the developer tools, every time it would give you a fresh <coughs> view of your console. This is still showing console output from previous runs. And I guess the way they show you that is these are grayed out. These latest outputs are colorized, and these older ones are grayed out. So I thought that this clear on navigate would do it, but it doesn't seem to do anything. You have the clear console, and then now the next time I run it, I'll get a brand new empty window of console output. You know, if I restart it, but one annoyance is that your console can get pretty messy pretty quick. So I'm going to run it one more time. So there it is. So this is the most current code. Um, we're in the net, we're in the index file. We cannot find the fav icon for it was ready. Line twelve. Clear that, and then if you'd like to, you can load it in the device. But um, this is what I wanted to do today. Uh, we're going to wrap up in just a bit. Uh, we're setting up this starting point, which we will use throughout the course, the CBDB file. I'll put my copy in the folder in just a moment. But what the big idea is that we've done is we've edited various aspects of the config file, right in the common screen, in the Android screen. We've added various plugins. We're going to add more as time goes on. We've written a little code with the JavaScript, or that is the splash screen JavaScript. We, we edited those icons a little bit. We're going to continue to do that stuff and more as we go on next time. But the um, that's our process. Write this code, deploy it, switch between devices, JavaScript mostly, some HTML, some CSS. When we come back um, next time, we're going to start to integrate the project from last month to this month. We're going to add real splash screens and all of that. Once we get that integrated, then we're going to move into, well, let's keep working on that app. We've got a login, log out, which should work perfectly from last month. Well, now we've got various screens. I want to start to set ourselves up to save information and save, start to use a database and all of that stuff. Again, like I said, on the app, we're going to have a barcode reader. We're going to be able to save notes. We're going to be able to take a photo of the comic, any, anything we want. And that one step beyond that will be some sort of inventory tracking app. The sky's the limit. How would you think about how could we integrate geolocation into that app, the comic book app? What if I save a comic? And I, then I want it to detect my location so that it tells me local comic shops. So I can use the GPS, the geolocation plugin, to help me do that. So again, Cordova is like pieces of a puzzle, and then it's up to you to see how those pieces fit together. General questions on things we talked about today? Yes? The config XML file expects certain code, whereas regular old HTML is a lot more open. This config XML file expects only certain tags to be written here. So there is a comment that was built in, but it's expecting a tag that specifies Cordova. If we write our own comments, it's not what it's expecting, and it most likely will cause problems. So I'd like to write comments to explain myself, but it's safer not to. One thing to note here, um, I think I've uh, confirmed it, uh, I saw it earlier. It looks like that if you edit the XML file manually, and then edit it in the design view, it looks like it erases your changes from manual edits. It seems to have removed my 10 seconds. Right, so I have this delay 10,000. Yeah, it's, it's not there anymore. So that's okay that I did it on purpose, it erased it. 
this is just things to be aware of. If it suddenly is not showing for 10 seconds, um, that's, that's what's happening there. But if we wrote some other custom code, like if you wrote here the code for a 192 pixel size splash screen, I mean a 192 pixel sized icon, if you manually add code here and then go back to edit the the uh, design view, it seems to delete your manual code. So you might want to copy the code here elsewhere, like into Notepad, make your changes in design view, and then compare what changed. It's kind of annoying, but in my case, I'm going to put back what apparently got erased preference. Reference name value use SSD splash screen delay with a value ten seconds. Right, so if I'm done with the project for the day, I'll file and close solution just to make sure that it's all saved into my flash drive and I can exit Visual Studio. I'm going to put a copy of this code in the network folder in just a moment. We'll do a little lab time until 9.30. There's an activity on Blackboard that you need to look at to work on over the weekend. When we come back on Tuesday, we'll keep working.